Do you struggle with dropped calls, no service, or painfully slow data in your home or office? You're not alone, and the WeBoost Office 200 could be the system that finally solves your weak signal problems. Hi, I'm Dan from Ubersignal. Today we're going to break down what makes the WeBoost Office 200 so powerful and whether it's the right fit for your space. Before we dive in, let me quickly explain how a signal booster works. It starts with an outside antenna that picks up the existing signals from nearby cell towers. That signal travels over a cable and into an amplifier, which boosts the signal and makes it stronger. Then, the boosted signal is sent through cables to one or more inside antennas that broadcast the strong signal into your space. And the whole process also works in reverse. The phone sends out a signal, which is picked up by the inside antenna, boosted by the amplifier, and rebroadcast back through the outside antenna to the cell tower. This strong two-way amplification is what keeps your calls, texts, and data working reliably. We've installed nearly every booster on the market, and the Office 200 keeps coming out on top for power, flexibility, and real-world reliability. Customers like the Office 200 so much that it has the lowest return rate of any home or office system that we sell. This booster is perfect if you're struggling with weak cell signal in a large home, office, or any place where you need strong, reliable signal. The Office 200 supports all major North American carriers, and it boosts signals across multiple bands. That means it works reliably with Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and others right out of the box. It's FCC certified and carrier approved for use on all U.S. networks. We'll have links in the description where you can find more information about this booster and the different components we'll be covering today. All right, let's dive into what makes the Office 200 such a powerful booster, including how it performs and the antenna options that can make a huge difference for your setup. So stick around, especially when we get to the antenna types, because the type of antenna you choose can make all the difference. Now, let's talk about the most important part, the amplifier. Think of the amplifier as the engine that drives the whole system. This is the key component that takes the weak signal from outside, amplifies it, and provides a much stronger signal throughout your home or office. The WeBoost Office 200 amplifier is designed to give you the maximum boost allowed by the FCC, which is 72 decibels. That's the strongest amplification allowed for multi-carrier consumer boosters, and it's what allows the Office 200 to cover such large areas, even when you're dealing with a weak outside signal. It also has very strong uplink and downlink power. In simple terms, uplink power is how well the booster communicates back to the cell tower. Downlink power is the strength of the signal from the cell tower coming into your building. Because both its uplink and downlink power are high, the Office 200 keeps calls connected even in challenging signal environments, like rural areas or large, hard-to-cover spaces. There are lots of boosters that claim similar numbers, but in real installations, the Office 200 consistently has higher customer satisfaction than other systems. It's also one of the few systems where customers install it and never have to think about it again, which is exactly what we want from a signal booster. This comes from a feature called Extended Dynamic Range, or XDR. This is a huge benefit because it means the system will keep working even with really strong outside signals. A lot of boosters will shut down if the incoming signal is too powerful, but with XDR, the Office 200 can handle a wide range of signal conditions without missing a beat. And when it comes to supporting users, the Office 200 is designed to handle dozens of devices simultaneously. That makes it an excellent choice for office spaces, retail stores, hospitals, hotels, or any environment where multiple people need a reliable signal at the same time. One of the standout features of the Office 200 is the built-in color LCD touchscreen. This gives you real-time feedback on how the system is performing, and it's actually useful, not just a gimmick. When you first power it on, the screen shows your signal strength, system status, and a summary of each frequency band the booster is working with. You can also dig into the details for each band, including uplink and downlink power, which helps you see how well it's connected to the towers, and what kind of performance you're getting inside. 
If a band is being throttled due to strong incoming signal, you'll see how much it's being turned down, thanks to XDR feature we talked about earlier. And if there's a problem like oscillation, the screen will show a warning and tell you what to do to fix it. Or if you're getting really poor performance on a specific frequency band, you can turn it off entirely, something you can't do on lower-end systems like the Office 100. That gives you more control over how the system behaves in more complicated environments. The touchscreen makes setup easier, it helps with troubleshooting, and it gives you the confidence that your system is running the way it should. It's one of the best tools we've seen built into a consumer booster. Now, let's talk about outside antennas, because the one you choose can make a big difference in how well the system performs. The type of antenna you use affects how much signal the system can pick up from the tower, and in some cases, whether you get a usable signal at all. The omnidirectional antenna picks up signal from all directions. That's great if you're in an area where towers are located in multiple directions, or if the signal tends to bounce off of terrain like hills or buildings. It has a gain of about 5 dBi, which is lower than the directional options, but it's ideal if you've got a moderate outdoor signal and need multi-carrier support. It's also pretty compact, about 2.5 inches in diameter and under 12 inches tall, and it can be mounted on a wall or to a pole. Next, we've got the standard directional antenna. The standard directional antenna picks up signal from a single direction. It's best when you want to target a specific carrier or when multiple carriers all have towers in the same general area. It has about 9 dBi of gain and a 75 degree beam width, which gives you a good balance of gain and ease in aiming. Physically, it's a bit larger than the Omni, about 17 inches wide, and it should be mounted on a pole for best performance. Next, we've got the high gain LPDA. This is a much more directional antenna. It's great if you're far from the nearest tower or if you need to pull in a weak signal more effectively. It offers up to 13.1 dBi of gain and has a narrower beam width, between 40 and 60 degrees, depending on the frequency. So it's more focused and it requires more precise aiming. It's also a lot longer, about 44 inches, and it needs to be mounted securely so it doesn't turn in the wind. Now, the most powerful antenna we have is the parabolic grid, and it's made for extreme cases where you need to improve the signal strength or quality as much as possible. It offers up to 25 dBi of gain and has a very narrow beam, under 10 degrees, so it needs to be precisely aimed and on a stable mount. It's big. 39 inches wide, 24 inches tall, and just over 24 inches deep, and it weighs over 5 pounds. But if you need to pull the signal from far away and have line of sight, nothing else comes close. One tip, some people start with a standard directional antenna to find the general direction of the tower, and then swap in a parabolic and fine-tune the positioning from there. So. Which one should you use? If you've got a good existing outside signal and need coverage from multiple directions, the Omni is a safe bet. If you're trying to pull in a signal from further away, or you need a clearer signal, a directional, LPDA, or parabolic grid is going to give you better performance. And if you're not sure which one's right for your situation, our team can help you figure it out. Once you've got a good outside antenna pulling in the signal, the next step is getting that signal to all of the areas inside where you need it. That's where an inside antenna comes in, and sometimes you'll need more than one. The number of inside antennas your Office 200 will support entirely depends on the strength of your outside signal. If you've got a very weak outside signal, you're only going to want one inside antenna. If you've got a really strong outside signal, you can go up to four inside antennas. From there, the number of inside antennas you need depends mostly on your building size and layout. Here's a quick rule of thumb. For homes or offices with lots of walls, plan on one antenna for every 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. If you've got a more open layout like offices with cubicles, then one antenna can usually cover around 2,500 square feet. And for large open spaces like warehouses, you can often get around 5,000 square feet per antenna. Every wall or other surface that the signal needs to travel through will make the signal weaker and it will reduce the coverage area. If your building has multiple levels, 
thick internal walls or tricky layouts, using more antennas spread out strategically gives you better and more reliable coverage throughout. But more antennas doesn't always mean better coverage. To use more than one inside antenna with the Office 200, you need to add a splitter. Splitters don't increase the strength of the signal, they simply take what they're getting from the amplifier, divide it up, and send it to each inside antenna. For example, a two-way splitter is sending half the power from the amplifier to each inside antenna, while a four-way splitter is only sending a quarter of the power to each in inside antenna. So the goal is to use the fewest antennas that still get you good coverage. One quick question we get asked is, if I know I need two antennas now, but I think I might need a third or fourth antenna later, should I get a three or four-way splitter so I can add antennas later? The answer to that is no. You really don't want open ports on a splitter. So, for example, if you got a four-way splitter and you only had two antennas connected, each antenna would still only be getting a quarter of the signal from the amplifier, just 25%. The other two ports, a full 50% of the signal, would be wasted. You also really don't want open ports on a splitter. It causes problems. So always use the correct size splitter for how many antennas you actually have. You can always swap out a splitter for a bigger one later. If you're not sure how many antennas you need or how to space them out, we can help with that. It's something we do every day. All right, let's break down the different types of inside antennas because how you distribute the signal inside the building can make a big difference with performance. We're gonna start with the panel antenna. This one's super versatile. It can mount to a wall or you could place it in an attic or even lay it flat and point it down through multiple floors. That's actually how I have mine set up in my home. It broadcasts in a more focused pattern, so it's great for pushing signal into lower floors or down hallways. It has a gain of up to 7.62 dBi, and it measures 8.9 inches tall by 7.1 inches wide. The next is the standard dome. This one gets mounted to the ceiling, so it's omnidirectional. The signal comes out and broadcasts in all directions. You'll see this used in offices, retail stores, places with drop ceilings. It provides between 2 and 4 dBi of gain. It's about 7.3 inches in diameter and 3.3 inches tall. It's a solid budget-friendly option. Just remember that it's best at covering one floor at a time, so if you've got multiple levels, you probably need one per floor. Then we've got the low-profile dome antenna. This is another omnidirectional antenna, but this one is much more compact and it's more powerful than the standard dome. It blends in better too, perfect for high visibility spaces where appearance matters. It provides 4 to 7 dBi of gain, and it's just 0.33 inches tall and 9.4 inches in diameter. It costs a little more than the standard dome, but if you want more coverage and a cleaner look, this is the one to go with. For both of these domes, you do need to be able to run cables on the back side of the ceiling, so it works best for drop ceilings with ceiling tiles or drywall ceilings where you have access to the back side, like in an attic. Each one works with the Office 200 system, and the best antenna depends on your layout, how the building was built, and what kind of coverage you need. Now, let's talk about the parts that connect everything together the cables, splitters, and surge arrestor. The correct parts and quantities are included in every kit, so you don't need to worry about choosing these separately, but knowing about them will help you understand the installation and setup. The Office 200 comes with 400 series coaxial cable. This is high quality cable designed to carry signals with minimal loss. With each system, you'll get one 75 foot cable for the outside antenna, one 60 foot cable for each inside antenna, one two foot cable to connect the surge arrestor, and then a two foot cable to connect the amplifier to a splitter if you're using one. Speaking of splitters, if your system has multiple inside antennas, it will include a splitter to divide the signal. If you have two antennas, you'll get a two way splitter, three antennas, three way, and so on. The signal flows from the amplifier to the splitter and then out to each antenna using the cables we just talked about. Last, but certainly not least, every Office 200 system includes a surge arrestor. This little device protects your amplifier from surges that come from the outside antenna cable. It does two jobs. First, 
By connecting a ground wire to the ground screw, it lets everyday static charges bleed off harmlessly instead of sneaking into the amplifier. Second, if there's a big surge, say from nearby lightning, the arrestor temporarily severs the connection with the amplifier and dumps that energy straight to the ground. Then it resets. Both features only work if the ground screw is connected to the same grounding point as the rest of your system, with the ground lead as short and straight as possible. Use 10-gauge solid or stranded copper wire to connect the surge arrestor to the ground point. This wire is not included in the kit. For runs over 20 feet or with lots of bends, a larger cable may be needed. If you have any questions, contact your local code enforcement officer. Mount this arrestor outside, near the outside antenna when you can. But if the roof grounding is difficult, installing it inside just before the booster is fine. Wherever it goes, seal every outdoor connector so they're UV protected and waterproof, so the surge protection lasts. It's a small piece of the system, but it's one of those better safe than sorry components that can save you from a headache down the line. All right, we've covered a lot about the WeBoost Office 200, from the amplifier and the antennas to the cabling and the installation basics. Every part of this system is designed to give you strong, reliable signal wherever you need it. The Office 200 works with all major carriers, and it comes with a three-year warranty. But more importantly, it just works. Once it's set up, most people never have to think about their cell signal again. And if you're not sure what antennas you need, how many, or how to install the system, we can help with that. Our team does this every day, and we can work with you to build a setup that's customized for your space. You'll find links in the description where you can get more details about the Office 200, see the different antenna options, or reach out directly to our signal experts. If you're ready to get rid of your dead zones for good, the Office 200 might be exactly what you need. Or for large commercial spaces where you need a lot of coverage, or small homes or offices that only need a little coverage, feel free to reach out. We'll get you the best system for your situation. If you liked this video and think it was helpful, hit like, subscribe for more videos on fixing cell signal problems. Thanks for watching.